Over the years, the Pokemon games have received major graphical improvements, going from these ugly old sprites to beautiful... Okay, well, maybe not so much. In that same space of time, games like Digimon have gone from this all the way up to this. So what would have happened if Game Freak evolved with integrity? Well, today I'm going to take these three Pokemon and fix their old school sprites, starting with... So what exactly is a Bulbasaur, anyway? Well, according to Bulbapedia, the Bulbasaur line are horned tree frogs? Well, the hopping around in Let's Go makes some more sense now. I started by pulling out my sketchbook and doing some drawings to warm up. I've probably never drawn a Bulbasaur before. Hell, I've barely ever drawn actual Pokemon before. I've spent a lot of time painting the Pokemon Emerald map, but I'm not sure how well those skills are going to transfer over. Starting off with some sketches to get the hang of things is pretty damn important before jumping into our magnum opus. Now I know how it looks, but trust me, you've just got to trust the process, okay? We'll get a good enough painting to rival those pesky Switch games, I promise. So, I did about an hour of sketches to figure out what good old Bulba actually looks like. Turns out, Pokemon are actually a ton of fun to draw, to the surprise of millions, I am sure. Most of these look dodgy AF, but when you're drawing something for the first time, that's kind of inevitable. Actually, I'd argue it's a requirement. If it doesn't look at least a little weird, you probably need to push yourself more. Coming from experience here, I'm the master of my comfort zone. It's good to get in some different angles too, don't go thinking you know it perfectly just because you can draw it from the same three-quarter view every single time. You artists feeling called out yet? Well, welcome to the club. Let's swap over to digital and see if we can push these poses some more. Now, Bulbasaur isn't the ugliest of the Pokemon of red and green sprites by any means, but I love this little guy way too much to leave him looking like that. The two coming up, however, they're unforgivably ugly, even for my Pokemon-loving standards. <laughs> Now, you might think Bulbasprite actually looks alright, but I'd implore you to take a closer look at my artistic rendition of it. If we're comparing this to the sprites that came in the later games, yeah, sorry buddy, but you're looking pretty ugly to me. Alright, enough practice. Let's finally fix this nasty old thing. Now, the real focus here is on the sprite recreation, but I figured I'd throw in a super simple background to go along with it. Typically, I'll start any painting with a whole bunch of thumbnails first to figure out the composition, story, and basic colours, but seeing as we're just fixing the old Gen 1 sprite, there's not really much need for that here. Also, I'm just being lazy, that's the real reason. I can get away with it, and so I will. The face on this one honestly gave me so much trouble. By the end, I'd painted back over it probably three times before I was finally happy enough with it. Bulbasaur is an interesting one to paint, because you'd think, oh, he's green, so let's just stick inside that area of the colour wheel. But I actually used a lot more blue than you might expect. Any lines or shading that I did, all straight to a nice dark blue. So, without further ado, the grand reveal. So now we get into the real ugly sprites. Dragonite might genuinely be the worst looking sprite from Pokemon Red and Green. There's some strong contenders out there, don't get me wrong, but considering how bad this guy originally looked, and comparing that to every other iteration that came afterwards, hell, even blue and yellow were a drastic step up, and that's on the same hardware. So yeah, this guy's definitely in need of a remodel. I figured I'd start us off by redrawing that old sprite to see if I could get an idea for what it was they were going for. This version of Dragonite seems to have a much longer and more serpent-like neck, as well as some sort of frills running down its back. Well, one thing they absolutely kept consistent across the years was its tiny, tiny wings. I don't know how something this heavy is supposed to lift itself off the ground with just those for support, but I guess you make do with the bod you've got. Dragonite's a little trickier to draw than Bulbasaur was. Bulbasaur's very small and round, so the shapes overall are super, super simple. But with our dragon fella over here, there's a little more going on now. But there's a simple trick to help with all of this, and one that I loved using while doing these sketches. See, we live in the age of 3D Pokemon, which means that every single one of these guys also has a 3D model out there, just waiting to be toyed with. A quick dig around online for the object file, and it's a simple drag and drop into Clip Studio from there. 
Clip Studio Paint lets you view 3D models on your canvas, but if you don't have Clip Studio, you could just as easily open the model up in Blender or any other 3D program really. Or if you're getting older like me, you could even pull your 3DS out and view the original model live right there in your Pokedex. Being able to take the model and rotate it around is super handy for figuring out all these confusing shapes from the original games. You can even manipulate the arms or the legs or anything really to help you figure out the pose that you want to draw. But that's enough practice now, let's swap over to digital and actually fix this sprite. Going into the sketch here, I already knew the general pose that I was going for, but I was having some trouble still getting the general proportions right, and I wasn't sure if I should go for a sharper look with lots of straight lines, or lean into that chubby look that Dragonite's more known for today. Well, on attempt number four, I got lucky and ended up with a sketch that I liked well enough to power on ahead with. I've been feeling super nostalgic for old school Pokemon lately, if this video isn't an obvious enough indicator of that, so I wanted to give him a messenger bag like the Dragonite from the first movie. I must have watched that movie a hundred times as a kid, but it's been a few years now since I've gone back to rewatch it, so I'm way overdue on that, for sure. The colours here were a bit of a challenge too, specifically the highlights are something that I always struggle with. It's a tricky balancing act of trying to add in a lighter colour for the reflection of of the sun, but without it just looking like paint that's been smeared all over the surface of whatever it is you're drawing. I don't know that I have that much advice for this either, other than if your highlight is right up against a shadow, the edge should be pretty hard without much of any transition between the two, but if you're adding light to one of your midtones or to already lighter colours, then it's probably a better idea to slowly blend those into each other and get that nice smooth transition between the two. You can see this in action pretty clearly on the tail here. And now for the moment of truth. Okay, I know I just said Dragonite was the ugliest from red and green, but let's be real here. How did this thing manage to make it into the game? Mew has got to be one of the cutest designs in the series now, but to think that this is where it got its start? Talk about humble beginnings, goddamn. This one's urgent, so let's not waste any time here. You might notice that I'm holding a pencil in my hand this time around, instead of my usual ballpoint pen. That's because I just couldn't risk stacking up the uglies any further. Mew needs justice. Sadly, I am joking, of course. Drawing something for the first time, ugly sketches are a requirement, not a suggestion. So I would suggest that you brace your eyes for impact yet again. <laughs> I mean, if I'm being fair, they actually didn't come out too bad this time round, except for the uh, redraw of its original sprite, but look at what I'm working with here, come on. And to be fair to the original designers too, Mew was actually a last minute addition to the games. In the final two weeks before development finished up, it was snuck in right at the end to fill up some of the extra cartridge space. This actually means that Mew was designed after Mew 2, so the clone is actually technically the original design. It also kinda explains this gross fetus sort of look it's got going on here. I guess two weeks isn't a ton of time to fully round out a design, and at the time there's no way they expected Pokemon to take off in the way that it has since. Thankfully, they did revisit it before the next games released, its later designs are much more cat-like instead of being stuck forever as this creepy fleshy blob. So now, last but not least, our final painting for the day. And actually, it's a double painting, so we're gonna try something a bit different here, a split screen view, with one going by on either side. Personally, I think there's a clear winner between the two, but let me know which of the two you prefer down below. I knew with this painting I wanted to try and get Mew onto the thumbnail for the video, which meant that the stakes were way higher. If I'm supposed to be fixing that awful old thing but my recreation also looks bad, that's probably not gonna be a great look, huh? So when I'd reached the end of the first painting, I could just I could just feel that it wasn't it. The pose I was happy enough with, but the colours I'd chosen and the general proportions just felt not quite there. So I decided I'd take a second stab at it and see what improvements I could make. Second time round, I pulled up the Generation 3 sprites for some colour reference. It's easy to think that Mew's just a real light pinkish white, and so you'll be shading all to grey, but it's actually way more fun to try pushing those reds in the shadows, which gives it this real psychic type sort of glow. So, cast your votes, 
Which of the two do you think made it to the finish? Because it's time for the reveal. So there we have it, a whole three of the original 151 sprites fixed at long last. Subscribe if you want to see me do the rest, or check out this series over here where I'm painting the entire Pokemon Emerald map. All the project files can be found over on my Patreon page too if you want to dig around in those. Otherwise, uh, bye bye!